I have just concluded a very useful meeting and lunch with King Hussein. We all recognize that the positive atmosphere which has developed in the Middle East recently can be credited in great measure to His Majesty King Hussein. Steps he's taken over the last year gave new momentum to the search for peace. Our discussions today have provided further evidence of Jordan's commitment to a peaceful resolution of the Middle East conflicts, which should prompt a sense of gratitude from men of goodwill everywhere. The United States has long played a central role in the Middle East peace process. We're proud of what we've helped accomplish, and we look forward to continuing to make meaningful contributions. But we hope that His Majesty's courageous steps forward can lead to direct negotiations between the parties based on United Nations Security Council resolutions 242 and 338 by the end of this year, and we'll do our part to help bring this about. Our goal remains a just, lasting, and comprehensive peace which will satisfy the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people and provide for the security of all states in the region, including Israel. We recognize Jordan's economic and security needs. And in the spirit of working together, I have told the King that we will be able to count on the United States for assistance in addressing problems with jo which Jordan may face in those areas. We are pleased and proud to have had His Majesty here with us today. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. President, for your kind words. Ladies and gentlemen, I have had a full, friendly, and useful discussion with the President on all issues of mutual concern. Regarding the prospects of peace in our area, I have told the President that a just, comprehensive, and durable peace in the Middle East should secure the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people, including their right of self-determination within the context of a Jordanian-Palestinian confederation. I have also assured the President that on the basis of the Jordan PLO Accord of 11th February, and as a result of my recent talks with the PLO, and in view of our genuine desire for peace, we are willing to negotiate within the context of an international conference a peaceful settlement on the basis of the pertinent United Nations resolutions, including Security Council resolutions 242 and 338. We are offering a unique opportunity for peace, which might not be with us for long. I hope the United States, under the courageous and dedicated leadership of President Reagan, will find a way to seize this opportunity and respond positively to our peace efforts. The active and balanced role of the United States is an essential element for the success of the peace process. I should like to thank the President for his hospitality and kind words and wish him continued good health and every success. Your Majesty, question please. Okay, sir. If you can hear me, sir, can you explain please why Jordan needs an international conference in order to negotiate with Israel, couldn't it do it directly? Could you elaborate a little on what your thinking is? Uh, in that regard, it is our hope that an international conference would enable the parties to the conflict to negotiate the establishment of a just and durable peace in the Middle East. We need the international umbrella to offer us the opportunity to negotiate. And when I speak of negotiations, 
I obviously mean negotiations amongst the party to the conflict. In other words, negotiations between the Arab side. In this case, a Jordanian-Palestinian delegation with Israel on the other side. Mr. President, would the United States participate? What, what, what? what is your view of, of such an international conflict? Well, we have been under dis this is under discussion, and we have not resolved some uh, differences that we have in views on this. But we're going to certainly continue uh, in these discussions. So what are the objections? What, what are the problems that are that remain? The definition of Palestinian We have made it very plain uh, heretofore, and nothing has changed with regard to those conditions under which we would meet with the PLO. Uh, well, I can uh, cite an example uh, of the International Conference of 1973. We uh, met and uh, negotiations were carried out between the Arab side and Israel. This is, uh, I believe, uh, a last uh, chance for peace. We are approaching it. Uh, as I've explained, uh, determined to do all we could for the establishment of a just and durable peace in our area. And obviously, uh, when we speak of negotiations, we speak of them within the context of an international conference, but negotiations amongst the parties to the conflict. Well, we certainly are approaching uh, the whole issue, uh, not in a belligerent uh, fashion. I, I'm almost sure of that. Your Majesty, has the PLO agreed to this framework, sir? Has the PLO agreed to this framework? Uh, what I have uh, uh, said in my statement uh, is the result of uh, my discussions with the PLO, yes. Your Majesty, are you committed to going forward with this this year? I'm certainly hoping very, very much indeed that uh, we will see some progress this year, yes. This is all being worked on right now uh, with us or together. Uh, this is what we are discussing. Who's he asking? Which one of us? <laughs> We think that the situation in Lebanon with regard to the peace process will be resolved completely when Israel has made its complete withdrawal uh, from Lebanon. Mr. President, now, wait a minute, there's a young lady over here who's been trying for. Well, no, the people we have working there are going to continue. Well, I'm not going to respond to that question because, as I say, we're still discussing uh, this whole matter, and I'm not going to get into any great details, uh, things of that kind. Is that one of the problems, Mr. President? Is that one of the problems, Soviet As I say, just generally, we're discussing and hopeful of arriving at a solution. Your Majesty, does your proposal include Soviet participation? I have spoken of an international conference and of the five permanent members of the Security Council. So the Soviets would be included? Well, that's what we are all working on, as the President has said. Yes, sir, I am saying that. Every word I have uh, made in my statement uh, is the result of uh, agreement between us and the PLO. PLO, yes. 
wait, wait, wait one sec. Wait, wait, wait. Wait. Now what? His Majesty has said that they've discussed this, and yes, that this. Well, as I've said, the, our terms have been made very plain for quite some time as to what is necessary for us to negotiate with the PLO, and they remain unchanged. Well, because, oh, well, I will answer then be this word that this was the last chance, and then this is the last we're going to take. Um, the last chance, I think that the conditions have never been more right than they are now uh, to pursue this peace. And who knows whether those conditions will ever come as close together again as they have now. So that's why I think the term last chance, and uh, I think we ought to keep that in mind, that perhaps it is the last chance. And now uh, we're not going to take any more questions, and I feel a few drops of rain, and it doesn't bother His Majesty or me, but we won't want any of you to get wet, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.